the state of Jammu and Kashmir shoulders a very special responsibility, that of protecting its unique biodiversity. Owing to events that took place over 25 million years ago, the region is endowed with a wide variety of life forms, both plants and animals. These creatures had to adjust to a very special environment that arose after the breakaway island that was to form the Indian Peninsula collided with the Asian mainland, giving rise to the mighty Himalayas. A zoogeographic diversity of flora and fauna from Oriental to Palearctic was born here. In Jain K, we have three regions. The Jammu region, which has a different type of climate, that the subtropical, then we have the, the valley, Kashno Valley, which are the temperate type, and then we have the Ladakh area, which has the say almost party type of climate. And these all these regions have different type of flora and fauna which go in with the uh, with the local local conditions as they are prevailing. Forests play a vital role in conservation of land and water, forming a resource base for the entire region. And it is this very resource base which directly affects both agricultural production and resultant socio-economic progress. Because of their immense importance, jungles have been termed carbon dioxide sinks, oxygen banks, natural water reservoirs, watchers of the soil, even life support systems in their own right. In olden days, jungles used to be worshipped and revered. Today, human greed and materialism has meant that green forests have given way to bare fields and human settlements. The result, a number of varieties of rare plants and animals are either already extinct or on the verge of extinction. The total geographical area of Jammu and Kashmir is 2,22,266 square kilometers, of which 20,230 square kilometers remain covered by jungles comprising 20% of the forest cover area. With rapid growth in population, per capita forest area has also decreased from 0.85 hectares in 1947 to 0.23 hectares in 1996. Kashmir has a total land area of 15,948 square kilometers, of which 8,128 square kilometers, comprising 50.97%, comprises forests. Jammu covers 26,293 square kilometers, of which forest area comprising 45.89% is 12,066 square kilometers, and Ladakh has a land area of 59,146 square kilometers. The forest cover here is 36 square kilometers, the equivalent of 0.06%. The conducive climatic conditions of Jammu give rise to rare varieties of flora and fauna. Jammu region is just like a phytotron. Uh, its altitudinal zonations vary from tropical to very, very high altitude to the alpine areas. So, we have uh, tremendous biodiversity in Jammu region. Uh, you may not find this type of biodiversity in other states of the country. Pine trees constitute a large part of Jammu's forest cover. They can be found from a height of 4,500 to 5,500 feet and have a life of between 150 to 200 years. Pine seeds take about a month to germinate and continue in the sapling state for three years. Next comes the pole stage lasting 25 to 30 years. It is only then that the pine tree reaches its final shape. The pine tree gives out the most oxygen, which is beneficial for patients of tuberculosis. Wood from the tree is strong and is used as timber. 
The leaves go into the manufacture of paper. Resins are also available from pine, which are used by industry for a variety of purposes. But resin catches fire easily, hence the frequent fires in pine forests. A tree frequently found growing with the pine is the shisham from which teak is derived. Teak is ideal for manufacture of furniture because of its strength and durability. It takes 25 years for the tree to reach its full size and its average lifespan is 150 years. The grand shisham is commonly found along the river bank. It acts as a soil binder and prevents landslides. If one climbs further upwards, one finds forests of oak. Oak is also used as timber. The tree's byproducts are also used as fodder for animals. Besides these are found bamboo, chikri, pulai, amla, cow and jamun trees and shrubs like snate, rizount, garund and nerium indicum. The state of Kashmir falls within the temperate zone and with the geography varying from high mountains to vast plains, a wide range of plants and animals are seen. We got mostly dudar, kail, har, and in Jammu province we got cheer also. And in Bardiud we got, get this uh, ascus indica, we got some walnuts, and we got uh, this uh, shisham. And they are the main species that are in our forest areas. The tall trunks of the deodar tree are a common sight in the upper reaches of Kashmir. The deodar is planted in gardens and parks because of its beautiful and unique triangular shape. The wood is scented and strong and remains unaffected and sturdy despite being submerged in water for years on end. So deodar wood is ideal for building houseboats that are so common on the lakes of Kashmir. It is also used for other construction work. Deodar trees are found in plenty around the Gulmarg region. The nature has bestowed and enriched this forest range with her. All kinds of uh, uh, all kinds of plant species that are most uh, that are almost found in every temperate region of the forests. We have here a profound growth of conifers trees. We have in conifers we have citrus deodara, we have uh, pines, uh, we have uh, bees pindro, bud, uh, budlu, what you call fir. We have uh, pines valaichena, kale. We have here spruce and uh, a very important one is uh, that's got a very high medicinal value. That's uh, the drug extracted from that. We have a plant here that's Texas Baqueta. We extract the drug for cancer from that. Climb further still and one is greeted by forests of the fir tree. Fir is a speciality of Gulmarg. 80% of the road between Tangmarg and Gulmarg is lined with fir trees. The tree is found up to a height of 12,000 feet. Its strong wood means it is frequently used in building and construction work. Adding to the scenic beauty of the Kashmir Valley are attractive Chinar trees. Chinar is a widely spread out tree variety and is found all over the Kashmir Valley. The Chinar tree was brought to Kashmir by the Mughals. Today, Chinar trees over 400 years of age are still found here. Another of Kashmir's specialities is that plant life is visible even at heights of 14,000 feet. Vegetation is normally impossible at such heights, but a plant called Betula utilis is seen here at even greater heights. In days gone by, wood from this tree was used to make tools for agriculture like the plough and spade. The bark was also used as paper. Applying a leaf from the tree on an injury was a way of healing wounds. Among the other plant species common in Kashmir, kale, handoon, spruce and burza are the most important. Medicinal species numbering more than 1,500 are also found. 252 of these are endemic plant varieties, which are rare. 65% are used in the manufacture of Ayurvedic medicines. Of the medicinal plants of Kashmir, perhaps the most important is the Texas Bacata. The Texas Bacata grows in association with the spruce, fir and kale trees, 
growing in the lower canopy. It is short in stature, with a bark of reddish colour. Both bark and leaves are used to make medicines for the treatment of cancer. Devdar forest has also this uh, Texas Bicata plant, which is very rare plant, which is a uh, uh, threatened species now. It is a tree. People used to exploit it uh, uh, in a very different uh, uh, way because its value was not uh, known. Uh, people were Gujars and Bakarwals who lived in the area. They used to extract this bark and uh, prepare tea because its tea is, keep you extraordinary warmth. So this is a uh, different type of unique type of plant which is again uh, used for curing cancer. Texal is produced out of, out of it. A variety of other medicinal plants and shrubs are also found in Kargil. Of these, the most common are Spishu, Sefard, Naxbar, Lantang, and Derno Kushu. They are used for extraction of certain uh, uh, this extracts for some medicines. But we mostly export them in the raw form, and then the extraction is done outside the state in Amritsar and Bombay. Some of the other medicinal plants of Jammu and Kashmir are horse chestnut, Handun, Kunen, Bhera, Amaltash, and Kikar. Amaltash is a medicinal plant. It 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 is ये इधर तो दांतन में यूज करते हैं डेली डेली हां दांतन इसकी बनाकर उसको करते हैं इससे कीड़ा शीरा दांतों में या किसी किस्म की कोई दर्द वगैरह नहीं होती बिकॉज़ ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स द फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट हैज क्लासिफाइड देम अंडर सोशल फॉरेस्ट्री दीस प्लांट्स आर कल्टीवेटेड इन स्पेशलाइज्ड नर्सरीज एंड देन आइदर गिवन आउट फ्री और सोल्ड एट लो रेट्स नाउ दैट लार्ज मल्टीनेशनल कंपनीज हैव टेकन टू सेलिंग आयुर्वेदिक रेमेडीज people have once again begun to understand the importance of these plants medicinal plant hote hain na jitne bhi mar jo dawaiyon mein ayurvedic jo juice hote hain unhi ko plant karna hai unhi ki zyada dekhbhal karni hai usi ke upar zyada matlab jo zor diya ja raha hai the concept of social forestry took off in jammu and kashmir in 1982-83 its main objectives are as follows to create resources for meeting requirements of forest produce in the shortest possible time to rehabilitate degraded land with special emphasis on soil and water conservation and raising natural species to provide employment especially to unskilled labor to ensure people's participation to improve traditional pasture land to conserve ecology and environment and to increase productivity of wasteland Before the social forestry scheme was launched by the World Bank in 1982, the people of Jammu and Kashmir were dependent on natural forests. They did not know that by planting trees on barren land, they could protect their environment as well as earn their livelihood. Social forestry is actually uh, growing of plants and protecting them and managing them. with the help of people giving them due share this is social forestry means where uh, people are involved to grow to protect and to manage uh, those forests those are called as social forestry after it was set up the social forestry project was a tremendous success in the state including farm forestry rehabilitation of degraded forests strip plantation and coal desert development a forestation activity was carried out over vast areas in 1981 82 306 hectares of forests were planted between 1982 and 92 91250 ha hectares were laid and between 1992 and 1997 38794 ha hectares of forest cover was planted Besides being home to rare plant varieties, a singular collection of animal life is also found here. 
The animals that Jammu and Kashmir is privileged to protect are stars in their own right. Prominent among them are the snow leopard, common leopard, brown bear, red fox, markhor, musk deer, shapu and hangul. Hangul is a species of a deer which is confined mostly to Kashmir Valley and that, that too in small pockets due to the earlier um, pressure which the animal had to face. And uh, this is this is a threatened species on the international red book, which is a so uh, it's a, a, a similar type of animal is found in Scotland, which is related to the hangul of uh, Kashmir Valley. The hangul or Kashmiri stag is a classic example of the predicament in which both humans and animals find themselves in today whose needs come first, the animals or the human beings. The Hangul's future is dependent entirely upon the health of its habitat, the Dachikam National Park. There is no exact record of the number of Hanguls, but estimates are available. At the turn of the century, there were 5,000 Hanguls in the region. By 1947, there were some 2,000 Hanguls left. 1965 estimates put their number at 180. And in 1970, Dr. Halloway estimated that only 140 hunguls remained. But recently, the Wildlife Department has taken firm steps to protect the hungul. It is the habitat of the womb of an animal uh, which has to be cared for. And uh, the pressures uh, which they have, the welfare factors which the animal or anybody, any human being wants, they are the food, shelter uh, and uh, protection. And all these factors are being taken care of so that the animal welfare factors are provided to the maximum. Naturally, the number has to go up. There are five national parks and 11 wildlife sanctuaries in Jammu and Kashmir today. National parks cover a total land area of 15,000 square kilometers. The main animal varieties found in Jammu are cheetal, barking deer, Rhesus monkey, jackal and porcupine. The biggest problem facing jungle conservation in the region is cattle grazing. One is that the areas are too small. Second one is this grazing pressure, that's, uh, then human pressure, this uh, biotech interference is too much. And uh, lastly, uh, the infrastructural uh, uh, deficiencies. We have very less infrastructure, very less mobility. We don't have, uh, there is only one or two vehicles in the whole of the region. To the problem of cattle grazing are added the problems caused by the local Bakarwal tribe. Bakarwals are a nomadic tribe whose main profession is cattle rearing. These tribes move to the hilly regions of Kashmir in winter and return to Jammu in the summer months. Their cattle, comprising goats, buffaloes and sheep, cause considerable damage to forest cover. Their sheep are responsible for spreading disease. We are uh, taking all the protective measures, whichever are required, but uh, we have a main problem here that the uh, protected areas are too small and a lot of uh, uh, cattle pressure, grazing pressure is there. So, we are uh, approaching the government to frame a uh, proper grazing policy so that the grazing pressure is minimized. Ladakh stands at a height of 4,600 meters in the outer Himalayas with its peaks ranging from 5,800 to 7,600 meters above sea level, forming perhaps the most striking feature of Asia. Ladakh literally means land of passes, deriving from la meaning pass and dakh meaning land. This region of Kashmir has its own varieties of animal life. In Ladakh we have the snow leopard and this snow leopard is a uh, is very rare species in all our entire world but we have been lucky that we have a rich source of these uh, le uh, snow leopards which are confined to our Ladakh and, and Kargil sectors. And similarly, we have the one more, we have the black neck crane, 
which we find in the dark, which is also very, very rare species. Then we have the, the, the wild ass, we have the barrel, we have the blue sheep, and uh, so partridges and so many other species in the dark. Most large mammals have a unique device for protection against the cold, a highly insulated shaggy coat. Hence, they feel little need for shelter from the elements. This is perhaps the reason for more goats and sheep living in the open here than anywhere else in the world. The largest animal of the coal desert is the yak, a wild ox. Immensely shaggy and weighing about a ton, it has carved horns, the tips of which can be as wide apart as 90 centimeters. The yak can be easily distinguished by its long black hair, tinged with grey at the muzzle. After spending summer in the hills at heights of over 6,000 meters, in the winters it moves in herds to the lakes, marshes and lower valleys. Besides animals, a wide variety of birds also have their homes in Jammu and Kashmir. They include the common coot, common teal, pintail, Indian moorhen, purple moorhen, mallard, gadwal, egrets, pond herons, dubchick and kingfisher. Besides these, thousands of migratory birds also visit the region. We are very also lucky to have these migratory birds which come from Siberia, China and the far off places and for which, uh, as you know, the world famous hokas are uh, wet and deserved. And uh, then we have the Somar and Somarai in, in, in Ladakh, which is famous for bald-headed geese. So these migratory birds come here during the winter months when the conditions in the rural country are very, uh, very severe. Whereas on the one hand, jungles are a source of life-giving oxygen, they are also very important for the environment. They also fulfill a number of other needs. Many products of the jungle are items of daily use. They are an important source of timber and fuel wood. Timber produce from 1947 to 1996 was as follows. In 1947, 28,000 cubic meters was sold, from which revenue derived was 28.83 lakh rupees. 1950 saw sales of 74,000 cubic meters with a revenue of 49.66 lakhs. 1960, 4 lakh 52,000 cubic meters with a revenue of 361.60 lakhs. 1970 recorded sales of 4 lakh 23,000 cubic meters with a revenue of 558.71 lakh rupees. 1980, 6 lakh 9,000 cubic meters, revenue 3,423.84 lakhs. 1990, 1,55,000 cubic meter sales, revenue 2,304.22 lakhs. And 1996 saw sales of 1,13,000 cubic meters with a total revenue of 3,127.46 lakhs. The last few years has also seen growth of timber smuggling from Jammu and Kashmir. Unfortunately, our forests have received a very serious setback due to this period of militancy when most of our trees have been mercilessly cut everywhere. But after the popular discussion of the popular government, the forest smuggling has been curtailed more than 95 percent. So there is no smuggling at all. The government took firm steps in the direction of stopping smuggling of timber. Large-scale measures were taken primarily in two directions. On the one hand, forest guards have been given special privileges to be able to prosecute smugglers. On the other, timber sale depots have been set up at several places. Trees which reach an exploitable age are cut down and the timber sent to these depots. From here, the timber is made available to people at controlled rates. No green cutting is being done in our forest. We are only removing the dead fallen dry material. That is also to meet the demand of our people. So should be the social obligations. During the current year, we have issued an amount, a quantity of 5 lakh of CFT of timber duty delivered at our depots to the, for the business of the people. When the state corporation is doing this depot, they open auction and give it to us. And the amount of money is sold here, there is a list of our divisional forest officer in Badgam. We have sold our list of how much money we have sold. And our depot of divisional forest officer in Badgam, he gives us a release of this list. And this list, जब इस लकड़ी का रिलीज आता है मेरे पास मैं देखता हूं कि इस लकड़ी ने इस बिडर ने पैसे गवर्नमेंट को बढ़ दिए कि नहीं 
मैं बाजब तातोर इनकी बिल चेक करता हूँ कि अगर किसी ने दो सौ मकई फुट लकड़ी यहाँ से ले ली मैं बिल चेक करता हूँ कि इसने दो सौ मकई फुट लकड़ी का कीमत भर दिया खजाने में कि नहीं या जिसने खजाने में भर दिया हो तो मैं फार्म पच्चीस देता हूँ यहाँ कहीं भी ले जाना इसको कश्मीर गवर्नमेंट से मैं फार्म पच्चीस अपना देता हूँ ये उठाने मेरा फार्म पच्चीस जो है ये एक जगह से दूसरे जगह तक लेने का फार्म है Several products classified as minor forest products are also obtained from forests. Among these products are bankakadi, brahmi, baryan, tejpattar, dhup roots, kaur, rezound, katha and ambar. Several of these products which are of high quality are also exported and the revenue from these exports contribute prominently to the state exchequer. Forests then have a vital role to play in keeping alive the economy of Jammu and Kashmir as well as protecting the rich panorama of flora and fauna that inhabit them. It is clear that the livelihood of lakhs of Kashmiris relies on their rich products and agricultural wealth. It is essential that this wealth that is Kashmir's heritage be given adequate protection. Only then can we hope for a brighter and better tomorrow for the children of this beautiful state which in its very essence is a gift from the gods.